Hey guys, Jacob here, and today I am presenting a very special interview. I got to interview the director of Living with Chucky, the new Child's Play documentary that just dropped, Kyra Elise Gardner. Wonderful interview, great to talk to, uh, and just a wonderful documentary, guys. Seriously, if you if you are a Child's Play fan, you gotta check it out. Whether you're a casual fan or a fucking diehard fan, you gotta watch it. Uh, for some of y'all who know me, I am a huge Child's Play fan, and this documentary was just awesome to watch. I caught it at I caught it at Fantastic Fest, and uh, I got to watch it once more through a little screening, and uh, yeah, it was great. I I was psyched. I'm wearing my Child's Play hat during the interview. I wore my Child's Play wristband. I had my Chucky Funko Pop out. It's I had my Chucky <laughs> patch out. I. I love Child's Play. So this is, was a great documentary to watch. Super fun. Really emotional. Really heartfelt. You could tell it came from the heart. And uh, yeah, I can't, re I can't recommend it enough. Guys, I'm going to make sure to put a little link down there. Uh, anywhere you can watch the movie. I believe it's on video on demand now. And I believe it's getting a Blu-ray release sometime within the next week. So be on the lookout for that. And uh, yeah, enjoy the interview. <laughs> well, hi. Uh, how you doing today? Uh <laughs> First off, I want to say congratulations on the documentary. It was wonderful. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. That was my second time watching. I caught a Fantastic Fest last year, which was, it was, it was a treat. I didn't know what I was getting into, and I, I loved it. Me too, making the movie. I had no idea what I was getting into. I, I bet, because it's like meeting your extended family. That's, I mean, I yeah. love that aspect of the documentary, the, uh, you know, the family aspect you talked oh, about. Oh, thank you. Of course. Um, so I guess to start off, who who was your favorite person to like sit down and meet, uh, you know, during filming? Um, I mean, everybody was <laughs> so was great in their own regard. Uh, David Kirshner's interview was really mm -hmm. awesome because we got to go to his house, and he has like the weirdest, coolest art in his house. He has some original like Tim Burton sketches from Sleepy Hollow. He's like such a big child in terms of like loving the, the, the films and things that he does and he was so open and candid and I don't think he's had the opportunity to like say as much as he did about the franchise in uh, behind the scenes interviews and things over the years so that was a, a interview I very much loved and it was like he's just such a warm like loving this loving dad energy and, and right. I love him for that yeah, I definitely got that vibe to the interview, and I, I I enjoyed you know hearing his perspective on it. You know, going back to the original Child's Play, it's kind of conception with Blood Buddy and batteries not included. I love you know that insider stuff with the script. Um, uh, so I know, of course, Chucky is probably your favorite. I'm assuming your favorite slasher villain. I mean, I feel like I have to say yes at this. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, have a slash that favorite slasher. You don't have like a you don't pick favorites, you don't. <laughs> no, I mean I like the original it clown Tim Curry's mm -hmm. great. Um, and then I think Freddy's cool just because the idea that you can't go to sleep is is right. interesting to me. But it's probably because I'm so very desensitized to Chucky at this point. Right. No, absolutely. Um, and like with the franchise, it's been through so many, um, you know, incarnations, you know, and you talk about that in your documentary, you know, the uh, the comedy aspect, the, you know, family aspect, Chucky getting a wife and a kid, and now it's in a TV show. Um, so I guess if you were, you know, in charge of it all, where would you, where do you see the franchise taking, um, if you could? Oh, goodness uh like in terms of like where it would go from where it's where it's at yeah if you could if you were handed the keys to the kingdom like what would you know what, what would you be doing uh, that's a very interesting i think everybody wants a crossover episode honestly by the keys to the castle megan versus chucky let's go like i would love to put those two in the same room together um but that's just me. Obviously, that's like not a storyline, and it would just be for. No, you have kicks. no idea how happy I am to hear that. That is awesome to hear. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Um, and like just the the documentary, it's so well. Um, it's it's just it's just well made. You know, it's great. Um, do you see yourself doing any other 
documentaries on you know films because you really do take a deep dive and do a a really cool franchise. So do you have any others that you'd like to get a camera in front of and put under the microscope a little bit? Um, I actually shot and directed a making of um, the Foo Fighters movie that came out last year, Studio 666. I filmed like everything from the first table read to set to post-production to, um, yeah, it was a long time of filming to <laughs> the premiere last year. And although that's, uh, it's a bit different because there's now a studio involved. So I'm not sure what's going to happen with that, but I hope that comes to fruition of being a full feature doc because it's all the footage is there. And that's something that's like literally in depth of uh, that movie because I was there on set being able to film it. Whereas like, obviously I wasn't even alive in 1988 being able to film on the set of Child's Play. But as far as anything else, um, other movies, honestly, anything James Wan does, I want to be there and pick his brain and be cool to that experience of following a movie from start to finish, just as a fellow like filmmaker and director was really mm -hmm. cool. It'd be interesting to do that for another film, but also a franchise. Um, however, I don't think there are like current ones that I'd be like, yes, or anything right. like that. <laughs> but, but James Wan's an interesting guy. I mean, I could see you doing the, the James Wan biopic one day. That'd be oh that'd my be God. Some I, I would cry. <laughs> um, I love this movie. So you, you do a full breakdown of the franchise. Is there any particular, I mean, again, hard to pick favorites. Is there any specific film in the franchise that you have like a, a higher love for than any, like, because you're going through the different VHSs and DVDs. Do you have a yeah. favorite? Um, I think it's pretty clear from my poster that yeah. I am a big Child's Play 2 fan. <laughs> Saw yeah. that one coming, yeah. It's great. It's great. It's like one of the best horror sequels ever. Yeah, and um, also that poster is so simple yet effective, and the tagline's great. And yes, it's amazing. It really is. Um, any more questions? Uh, so it's in my opinion, this is a must watch. You know, for Aww. for fans of the franchise, you know, it because you take such a great look at the highs, the and the lows. You know, they talk about. You know, budget cuts to the the newer sequels after I think you said after Bride, it kind of um, the the budgets took a took a bit of a dive, um, and now it's back with a TV show, and now Chucky's back again, and it's amazing. Yeah. Uh, and like, I, do you feel like Chucky had a big resurgence over the last uh, five years through? Yeah, yeah, most definitely. Like, especially from Curse, because Curse was the first one that was like mm -hmm. direct to DVD. And um, I'm kind of shocked that it didn't get a theatrical release because they did bring it back to being scary. And so it was like, after Curse, I was like, sure, that did well. They're mm -hmm. for sure going to have Cult of Chucky be a limited release in theaters. And again, they didn't. And I was like, are you kidding me? So it was like, it was there for the Chucky fans who were there and dedicated and wanted to see it. Great. But if you were just a horror fan, say not necessarily into Chucky just yet or what have you, it was like you had to go out of your way to, to mm -hmm. find it and watch it. And now with the TV show being on streaming services and it's uh, having a successful first season, getting a second one, and now they're going off to film season three definitely feel like there's been a resurgence and also the fact that they brought it to a younger generation like it takes place in high school so mm -hmm. they're able to grab onto a new generation of fans while still appeasing the old ones with having Jennifer in there and Fiona and things like that so um yeah most definitely and it's really cool to see because obviously with my age I, I didn't I was I was never able to see a Chucky movie in theaters and that's sad I didn't get to experience like the the like how it is with scream six right now everybody's mm -hmm. like yes ghost face and it's like it's now i'm kind of getting to experience that with chucky finally because of the series which is so cool to see I'm, I'm i'm with you the only child's play movie i ever saw in theaters was was the remake i couldn't i didn't get oh, to the see reboot, any other right. ones. yeah the yeah. reboot um and the, it's it's awesome watching the tv show and having everyone kind of we have a big resurgence of Chucky and I especially I think especially with the you know the L, you talk about the LGBT you know themes and how uh you know one of your guests said you know Chucky became kind of an ambassador for LGBT youth and, and horror and I think that has a lot to do with it. a lot of people feel very seen ironically on Chucky's side because he's 
It was even that line of the TV show where he's like, "I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm not a monster, you know. I, yes. I have a gay son." And I, I, I love wonderful. that line. I love that line of dialogue. I literally just quoted that earlier today of that <laughs> being like one of my favorite lines because exactly like it's still a show that's educating you on LGBTQ stuff without it being in your face. Like I think some people aren't um, like re receptive of, or people can get a little upset about, but it's just like, it's this thing that's existed in the franchise since Glenn came. I mean, it's all, it's always been gay <laughs> pretty much yeah. from the get go. Um, and like, so the fact that that is there and so like open and we have Gigi with Lachlan, who's a trans, like non-binary like person with, uh, it's just like so amazing that it's reaching people in that in a way that you wouldn't expect horror to. Right. It, it, it's, it's very unexpected, but it's, it's so welcome, you know, in the horror. I see so many people, you know, raving about Chucky today. And it, it's again, it's ironic that it kind of took a took a dive back in the early 2000s, but it had the biggest comeback. And I, I appreciate, you know, Don Mancini for for not copping out and not, you know, he always doubled down. You know, he yeah. didn't try to retcon anything. He brought everything. He stood by his work, yeah. you know, since the beginning. He didn't try. He didn't, you know, retcon Seed of Chucky or or Bride or any of the stuff that kind of um, yeah. contributed to it. But uh, and that's amazing. And you know, I I argue Chuck is one of the most like, ahead of its time slasher franchise because it even did the requel stuff earlier with a curse. Yeah, so everyone else like curse is a requel. You know, you talk about scream requels and Halloween requels. Chucky did the requel back in what 2013. Yes. Yeah. I'm getting getting told to wrap it up here. But uh, overall, it's an amazing documentary. Uh, um, great work. Um, and like from. I guess my final question for the start, like from the start, did you want to implement that family dynamic? Because I think that's what's most masterful about the documentary is how emotional it is. Yeah, that was kind of like, that was my motivating factor into making it was because there was that personal aspect to me personally. So I was more, in, I was more invested in making it and trying to make it well. And also like, that's what I think set it apart from other horror documentaries was like we actually got to know these people as I was sort of getting to know them and interviewing them and it just was like given that I you know my dad's my dad I was able to sit down and have more candid conversations like I specifically filmed it with natural lighting as much as I could as if you were just at your house as well talking to these people it's not a stage thing with a moody backdrop that most horror docs like to do mm -hmm. it's just like no let's like just have a conversation yeah. about Chucky. it felt very at home you know very, yeah. very you know homey it was lovely it was very comforting and yeah. I, I, I i again congratulations on all the success i can't wait for it to come out on blu-ray i'm a big blu-ray collector so obviously that's oh my God, gonna be a big pickup <laughs> <laughs> thank well, you of course well thank you so much for you know your time and um have a good one thank you you too have a good rest of your day thank you so much hey guys hope you enjoyed that wonderful interview with kyra elise gardner once again so great to talk to really nice and guys again please check out living with chucky i'm so serious it's a great documentary whether you're a casual child's player chucky fan or a diehard you know fan of the franchise i would highly recommend it so I'll go ahead and leave a link down below uh, to go ahead and watch it. It's on video on demand now. Don't miss it. And also down below, I'll be linking my full review for the documentary on my website. So uh, go ahead and give that a read also if you're, uh, if you're into that. And uh, uh, for those who haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. I try to do a lot of horror content on here, interviews, reviews, all that jazz, everything in between. And go ahead and smash like on this video if you enjoyed this interview. That's about it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you later. Peace.